game show going live a little bit early. This this emergency broadcast was scheduled for 3.30, but we're going to start live a little bit early here. So um, hopefully some folks will get notifications. We'll see. In the meantime, I'm going to try to pull this up on my iPad so that I can make sure that everything is the way it should be. Going live a little bit early. This, this emergency sounds party. good. Audio sounds good. And, uh, and so far, we've got nobody in the live stream yet. And so I wonder if any notifications went out. We shall see what we shall see. But we are starting early for a 3.30 broadcast start time, and this is a semi-emergency broadcast. I just scheduled it moments ago, <clears throat> had a little bit of extra time. The lovely Brianna is coming over later, and so I had some time, and I could continue to work at my standing desk, but I worked at that all morning, and so I'm taking a little bit of a rest bit here in the chair to do a live stream to talk once more about Grand Seiko Stunners, the 231, which I have on my wrist right now, this diver, and this is the Titanium Stunner. And then on the bench, I've got the 005, with, that has the 9F movement, and of course it's a GMT and that one is about 12 millimeters thick so makes a great all-arounder for when I need something to go underneath a tight shirt cuff that watch fits the bill for that every time it's tried so this could be a perfect one two watch rotation let's get a close-up on the two three one real quick the 231 on wrist and what what's really amazing about this 231 is it's a 44 mil watch but because of the titanium and because of the shape of the lugs the way it drapes around the wrist and the flexibility of the bracelet and the fact that everything is nice and rounded the finishing all those things make it extremely comfortable on wrist and then throw on extremely functional clasp which a lot of people have have attacked the watch for but in real life actually using it it is fantastic the clasp is extremely versatile I can literally lift up this flip lock and just give it pull it back a little bit and I can very easily extend this I just extended that about a millimeter flip that down and I've got it I just extended it just about a millimeter and then I can push this in one little click at a time I guess I did it two millimeters, so two clicks back in, and it's right back where it was. So just so quick and easy to make a, a fine-tune adjustment there if I need to on the fly. And then there are three, four micro adjustments here that seasonally you can adjust it. That's what I do when the um, summer comes around. I'll have to adjust this out when the warm weather starts coming. I'll adjust this out one notch and then in the fall I bring it in one notch so that's how that works um, I'm not seeing anything in the chat can you all let me know uh, in the chat if the chat is working the live chat and I'm just gonna type in here test T E S T and there at least that came up so there we go and so it looks like the chat is working. I had a live stream the other day. Rachel did a live stream, and it said chat was disabled on her on her live stream. So I don't know why that would have been, because generally speaking, the the um, the uh, chat does work. <clears throat> so for this Saturday afternoon broadcast, it was officially scheduled to start at three thirty. That's about four minutes from now. To uh, three minutes and 30 seconds to be precise from now and uh, I don't know if anybody got notifications on this or not so there's the uh, 005 stunner another look at that GMT <clears throat> and as I spoke about in my last broadcast I've been pondering the SBGY 002 that stunner there with a retail of 25000 
And then here's a decent photo of it in the article by a blog to watch. That's that uh, 002 18 karat gold stunner. But unfortunately, there are none in the country, and nobody's been able to get one in the country for Steve to get a hold of so that I could take a look at it. So, so what I did on Friday, I went ahead and initiated a transfer. I'm moving another moving another 25000 over into my Coinbase account. And I might just lock and load on a couple of more Bitcoin. That'll get me about, let's see, two and a half Bitcoin at $10,000 roughly there at 10000 I'd said I'd never spend more than 5000 for Bitcoin. But I've got this extra 25000 laying around and there's no watch for me to spend it on. Steve can't get the watch, so maybe I'll buy two and a half Bitcoin. What do you all think about that? What does Martin think about that? Martin is in the house. And let me just refresh this and see, make sure that I'm not missing anything. Make sure I'm not missing any important comments. There's no watch for me to spend it on. Okay, so everything looks like it's working. Everything looks like it's copacetic. Give us a thumbs up, folks, so they'll push this out to some more people. Click a little thumbs up on that. I've got one thumbs up on here right now. And the indicator says there's six of you folks watching. So we should have six thumbs ups. Thumbs ups. <laughs> it's hard to say let's say that five times. So anyway, so I've I've go I've gone ahead and moved the twenty five thousand uh over to my Coinbase account. Um and you know, it'll be there in a couple of days. It takes a few days for that to get in there and be ready to go. So probably after the holiday, Monday's a holiday. Then I'm going to have to decide what to do. Do I buy two and a half more Bitcoin and just stash them away? <clears throat> I still have, I did check. And uh, let's see. Um, let's see if this is still. I did check and I still have, I still have enough cash in my primary account to to uh to lock and load on that stunner if Steve were to get one so I'll still be able to make the move on the 18 karat gold stunner if he can come up with one so uh jing jingle jangly jubilee guy and what do you think I mean what's the deal with this 002 let me bring that back up on the screen here um what's the deal with this I mean they they came out with these stunners for 2019, these these special watches, and this one, by the way, is not a limited edition. the The stainless steel one. Let's go down to that one. That stainless steel unit is a limited edition, but this 18 karat yellow gold one is not, according to Grand Seiko, is not a limited edition watch. But we can't get it. We can't get one in the country. There's been a couple of them spotted in real life in um, Indonesia, but none here in these United States yet. And it's a stunner. I mean, I don't know if you guys have seen the video. Let, let me see if I can pull up the video. Let me cut to the 005 real quick. I'm going to pull up the video that, um, that Tim did about this watch. It just give me a second here. And, and because he did a video re review on it, and it's just a stunner. Um, let me see if I can find it. Just bear with me a second here. You there it is. Manual wind spring there drive caliper. This is the Grand Seiko and Elegance Collection spring it's drive a stunner. Hand wound, part of a collection informally dubbed the Thin Dress Series. Look at that. So this 20th anniversary watch is great. And I think on a bigger wrist it'll look really good. His wrist is kind of small, but I think on my wrist on the 16 that, centimeters be a perfect size. Wrist. And it's thin, 10.5 nice millimeters thick with a nicely lugs, sloped nice case flank. Trim, it will easily slide underneath a tight dress sleeve or cuff. From Lug to lug, wonderfully traditional, 43.4 so, yeah, millimeters, with 19 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Though so yeah, I, I mean, it, it seems like a stunner to me. It seems like they hit it out of the park with that piece. I love the dial, the fact that it uh, is just a three-hand piece. And I, I like the fact that it's manual wind. I like the fact that it's a 72-hour power reserve. So 
that's all good. I like the fact that the power indicator is on the back and not on the front. So it's a nice clean dial there. I like the fact that it's got the contrasting second hand that's like a blued second hand. I think that's cool. The case shape, the strap, everything is, is super cool. What am I missing here, folks? Why, why can they not get this puppy into these United States? What is the deal with that? What do you all think? What do you all think the deal is with that? Do they not want to sell it? What do you all think? And let me know in the chat. So as it stands right now, I have the 231 Titanium Diver, which as I've explained is just insanely comfortable on wrist. But one of the reasons I bought it is it's so legible, so easy to read in any lighting circumstances. Even without re reading glasses on, I can read this puppy under any circumstances and it's extremely comfortable so I can wear it anytime I want to no no worries of course extremely rugged it has held up really well I, I don't baby this watch I don't take it off you know it gets banged around and so on and it has held up exceptionally well let's give you another close-up So that titanium is, is, is really tough stuff, really holds up well. And then the 005, that watch has also been a very effective watch for what I use it for, which is when I need to wear something that will go underneath a tight dress shirt cuff, that watch has been able to pull that off. And then when I'm traveling, I like to use that. The GMT function comes in handy, and it's a nice all-arounder for travel because it does have a screw-down crown, so you don't have to worry about it being waterproof and all that and so it, it's uh, just a nice kind of do-it-all watch and it's always always super accurate so you can just grab and go with that watch and by the way the second hand is lined up perfectly with the markers it just on this camera angle it looks like it's not but as it goes around the dial there you'll see it'll it'll line up after it gets see right there it's starting to line up so it just depends on the on the camera angle. That's why. Uh, let's see. Um, thoughts on the new Omega Seamaster 300? Um, maybe there isn't much demand for the 002. Well, <laughs> I'm demanding it. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe I I don't know. I mean, how would they know unless they get one here? I mean, how how do you know if it's going to sell? Yes, you get it here. I would think at least get one. <laughs> Am I asking to, to, for too much? Um, I like the Seiko GMT you have. Um, now remember, Grand Seiko. Grand Seiko. It is a little bit higher finishing standards and so forth. Uh, maybe there's my Okay, I already read. Okay, so the Omega, the, the, the 300, uh, I've always liked that watch. As far as the new one, not sure what the big differences are. Um... Let me switch to the stunner real quick and see if I can pull it up. Um, let's see if I can pull it up on the um, on the Omega website. Just give me a moment here while this page loads in. And we're going to go to the official page. Well, now this is interesting. Um, interesting. I, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, Omega Seamaster. Look, look at that. That's interesting. That that one doesn't have the escape valve. Is that something they came out with recently? That's kind of cool. Kind of retro looking. Let's keep going. Um, that is kind of cool. I guess this kind of shows you the difference from the original to the... I guess this is a reissue. 
Steve should get on and really talk about these new uh, Seamasters. Uh, let's see. I wonder how thick it is. Does, does anybody know how thick it is? Um, okay, so let's try this one for starters. Let's see if they have any stats on this puppy. Um, 6800 list price. Um, let's see if we can get some stats. 41 millimeter. Of course, they don't show the thickness. <laughs> Jeez. These guys, what is wrong with these people? Um, okay, so maybe somebody can tell me in the chat how thick this puppy is. 41 millimeter is fine. That's, that's fine. 21 millimeters between the lugs, that's fine. So, um, yeah, that's interesting. I'd have to see one of those puppies in person, but that's interesting. The case is much more attractive than a super case on a, uh, on a sub. I wouldn't go for the super case on the sub. Uh, we've talked about that before. I'd go with a Yacht Master before I would go with the, the modern super case. Let's see. The latest ones incorporate the wave dial again. I like the Seiko GMT you have. Okay, we've already read that. Sorry. Um, is your GMT hand showing an hour behind? Um, good question. Good question. Uh, let's see. It is... Um, uh, let's see. It's coming up on 4 o'clock. So it would be coming up on 1,600 hours. Isn't that right? I think that's right. I don't know. You guys tell me. You guys tell me. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Blue Shirt Buddha is in the house. Blue Shirt Buddha, we've been talking about... Um, I, uh, I went ahead and, and moved some... I moved the 25000 that I had setting aside waiting on the 002. I went ahead and moved it into my Coinbase account. I, I started that on Friday, and uh, I guess I'm going to take the 25000 and buy a couple of Bitcoin, uh, two and a half or so Bitcoin. It's around 10000 right now, because I can't get an 002. They can't seem to get me an 002. The 002 Stunner, this puppy here, seems to be missing in action, and so what do I do with the 25000 right? And uh, now on the off chance, on the off chance that, that I go ahead and I buy the Bitcoin and they somehow come up with the watch. On the off chance they do come up with the watch, I, I can still pull the money out of my primary account here. I still have, still have plenty of cash on hand, so we can go ahead and, and grab that stunner anyway and have both the Bitcoin and the stunner. How, how's that working out? It's 2039 in London right now. Martin in the house. Okay, so what do you guys say? Is that in sync or not? Is my hour hand where it should be? Let me know. Let me know what you think about that. Now, <clears throat> daylight savings time. Right now, I get confused, okay? Right now, we're in normal time, correct? Right now, like for example, if it's noon... That really is the real noon. In other words, when the sun is highest in the sky, right, is noon, right? So, so we're legit correct time now. In the spring, when they, when they change the time, spring forward, move the time forward, that's going to be, then we're going to be off kilter, correct? Is that, am I, am I right in, in assuming that? Um. <clears throat> Hour behind, I think, Martin Ryder. Um, so, sing forward. So, see, what what I'm trying to do with my 24-hour hand, and that's probably, maybe I succeeded on this. Oh, shoot. Hold on. Let me, let me just put that into, into um, uh, put that into voicemail. But, okay, so what I was trying to do, and maybe I did achieve this, is I was trying to have... I, w I want my 24-hour hand to show the real time if we weren't changing the time around. Maybe I'm wrong. 
maybe it needs to be an hour forward to actually show the real time that it actually is now. So let me know in the chat what the real time is right now and and then I can make sure that I've got that 24 hour hand pointing at the real time if that makes any sense but you know the real time if they weren't monkeying around with it for daylight saving time Bitcoin is fine you could get a solid gold date 840 instead blue shirt Buddha yeah you can buy them for around 25 you can buy a, a 40 the pro here's the problem with me buying another date 8 is I have really gotten spoiled by the accuracy of the spring drive and the 9F. Uh, I've, just, I've just gotten just super spoiled with that accuracy and that's why I would love to get a hold of something that is a gold stunner like this 002 and also has the benefit of the spring drive. I mean that would be super cool I think. I think that'd be cool so that even if I'm wearing my stunner I have the spot-on accuracy of a spring drive so that's the thought process there but that's I understand your your thought process too blue shirt clocks go forward here in the UK 29th of March okay Steve yes yeah, spring forward um, so yeah, so I'm going to have to sort out that 24-hour hand and really where that should be pointing. Who knows what the legit time is right now without, without daylight savings time or anything like that. Like my watch says 16 minutes until 4 p.m., right? So I'm 16 minutes before the hour. Now... Is that legit 4 p.m. or is it monkeyed around with 4 p.m.? In other words, is this the legit time now and then when they change it an hour, that's the illegit time? Which is the real time, I guess is what I'm asking. I, I think the real time is now. In which case, if my watch is not correct now, then I should, ch I should fix that 24-hour hand and get it so it's correct. Um, let's see, 20.44 GMT, Martin in the house. Um, so, yeah, so let me know, let me know in the chat, legit, what time this thing should be indicating. Now, it looks like to me, at 4 o'clock, it's going to be 1,600 hours. And 4 o'clock um, isn't 4 o'clock 1600? 12 plus 4, right, is 1600. Is there something I'm missing here, folks? What am I missing on this, this situation here? Okay, the new Rolex movements are super accurate, losing or gaining less than one half. A second a day yeah but that's not even close to what mine are my this thing here is like within a second or two after like months <laughs> after like four or five months it's insane and this one I mean forget about it I mean that thing literally is is like right on the second I mean months later it's like hasn't gained or lost anything it's insane how accurate that that thing is so yeah Rolexes are pretty accurate by standard mechanical watch measure but not when compared to these Grand Seikos it's not even close yes four o'clock is 1600 hours yeah so mine should be right so when it comes around to four o'clock there that thing should be that red hand should be pointing right at the 16 which means that it's in sync with the hour now and I think what I do when the spring rolls around I think when we have the time change, I think I'm going to move my hour hand only, my 12-hour hand, and leave the 24-hour hand on the legit time so that I can always look and see and make sure what the legit time is. Um, they should have never done this daylight savings time junk. I mean, that is really a total scam. They should have never done that. 
Um, let's see, spring forward, fall back, 4 p.m. is 1,600 hours. There we go. Archie's GMT hand shows Bangkok time. There you go. I don't blame him. Absolutely. He's back and forth to Bangkok, so he needs to know that time. Let's see. <clears throat> <clears throat> if they could manufacture spring drive watches of that size, like the SBGY002, for instance, I think of the possibilities as regards the 40 millimeter dive watches from Grand Seiko. Now, understand though, the 002, one of the reasons why it's so thin is it is a manual wine watch, which for a dress watch, in my opinion, is great because you're not wearing it all the time. So, I, I like a manual wine watch in that circumstance. And, and the fact that it doesn't have a screw down crown is fine for a dress watch like that. Because again, you're going to be winding it, right? You don't want to have to unscrew the crown every time you wind it. So it's really a special use case situation. So I don't know how thin they could make these dive watches because they're auto wind, but they should be able to make them thinner than this. They should be able to get it down to what, 12 and a half mils or so? What's the sub, like 12.8 mils? Or is it pushing 13 mils now? I know they've made it a little bit fatter. Um, so whatever the sub is, they should be able to get it down to around that thickness, I would think. And, and I, it wouldn't break my heart if, if, they, if they made a 100 meter dive watch. I mean, I don't need you know, I don't need to go 200 meters or 300 meters or 1,000 meters, all this ridiculous stuff. I mean, I just want a heavy-duty watch that's got nice loom, that's very legible, that's comfortable. Yeah, I mean, that would work. But, of course, this one, for me, this one is super comfortable. It just can't be used as an all-arounder. It's just too big to be used as an all-arounder. So that's the issue there. Um, let's see. Uh Cliff Dweller, after buying my SBGA 009, I hardly wear my Rolex Explorer due to the 5 second versus 0 second accuracy per day. I hear you. I mean, you get spoiled fast with these things. You really do. At least the Rolex is 5 seconds fast, not slow. Exactly. If they're fast, at least you can just stop them and then, you know, start them back up again and be where you need to be. That's why I sold my um, Shogun, my Seiko Shogun, which I really enjoyed that watch, but it ran slow, and I just couldn't abide a watch that ran slow. I wore it for a few years. I, I put up with it, but it got old, and I just didn't want to put up with that anymore. I lay my Explorer 2 Polar down at night, crown side up, and it's neither gaining or losing time. Haven't had to set the time for weeks. Blue Shirt Buddha has an Explorer 2 that's really nailing it. Cool. And R. Wags is in the house. Happy Saturday, he says. So R. Wags, so, um, so I was just saying earlier that uh, I went ahead and, and transferred. I went ahead and transferred another 25000 over to Coinbase. And because Steve hasn't been able to get the 002 for me to spend my money on, so I figured I might spend the money on buying some Bitcoin. And uh, so, so what do you think about that? I, I, I wasn't ever going to spend more than 5000 for a Bitcoin. And I've actually told people that I wouldn't spend more than 5000 for a Bitcoin. But I'm actually thinking about spending 10000 it's right. It's a little under ten thousand now. I, I think we're due for a ten or twenty percent pullback, to tell you the truth. I'm thinking about buying on a dip, buying a, a few more Bitcoin. Uh, what do you think? Is that just absolutely crazy? Is that just nuts? So now I will say that if he does come up with the OO2, I still have. I can still pull the money out of my primary account there. I still have a bunch of cash laying around loose that I can just grab a hold of and buy, still buy that 002, even if I buy the Bitcoin. But, but what do you think? Is that crazy talk? Buying another $25,000 worth of Bitcoin? What do you all think? That funny internet money? What do you all think about that? Now, I could also buy 
the stable coin that they sell and deposit the stable coin in BlockFi and get like 8.9% interest. They pay 8.9, I think it's 8.9 now, on the um, uh, USDC, whatever that stable coin is it that uh, Coinbase sells. They, they pay, BlockFi pays like 8.9% or something interest on that puppy. So I could do, I could go that route too. Uh, two possibilities. I could buy the stable coin and get interest on it. Or I can buy the Bitcoin, and then I can still get interest on that if I want to. But just ride the Bitcoin, ride the Bitcoin roller coaster with a little more Bitcoin stashed away. What do you think about that, <laughs> folks? Crazy talk, crazy talk here on a Saturday. And uh, let's see, on March eighth, daylight savings is in effect. So we are, are on true time now. So 1600 is correct. Ray in the house coming in with the real facts. That's what we like. We like getting the real facts. So I think that's what I'm going to do. When we spring forward, when we move the an hour forward in the spring, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do my quick change on the hour hand and just move that an hour forward and leave my 24-hour hand where it is so that I can always know what the actual real legit time is. So that's, I think, what I'm going to do. Let's see here. A blue shirt Buddha, hey, our rags would love to chat off stream. Drop me a line. There you go. Not crazy. If you can afford the risk, then why not? And blue shirt Buddha is saying, take a risk. Take a risk. Um, a few, a few, uh, a few years from now, we'll kick ourselves for not buying more Bitcoin now. I like ETH and LINK too. No, I would skip on the on the altcoins though. I would skip on those. Uh, trend is up on Bitcoin. We all know that. No, it's not bad for you because your cost basis in Bitcoin is still very low. Kind of like buying Amazon or Apple stock as it was going up. There you go. And uh, let's see here. Uh, well said, our wags uh, waiting for a little more of a pullback before the halving, which we may never see. I, I'm looking for a 10 or 20 percent pullback myself, and I was thinking about snatching on that pullback. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. I might do it live on a live stream next week. I might do. Um, do whatever I'm going to do live. I might either buy some stable coin or buy, you know, if it stays at about the price it's at now, I can get two and a half Bitcoin, a little more than two and a half Bitcoin. So I might do that live on the show, folks. I might do that so people can see how all that works. Uh, again, I, I've done it once before on the show. That was when I bought it for 4000 once before on the show. <clears throat> so, yeah, and I can't believe it's at $10,000 right now. That's insane. I mean, I remember when we were talking a few years ago, I was, uh, my dad was interviewing the Bitcoin Meister, Adam Meister. And they were speculating as to whether or not we would hit $5,000 in 2020 before the halving, before the 2020 halving. They were speculating as to whether or not we would hit 5000 It was at like $1,250 then. And, and, they, and, and, you know, we were like, my gosh, can you imagine if it would hit 5000 by the halving? And, of course, since then, we've gone all the way up to 20000 back down, back up to 14000 back down to like 3000 something, and now back up to 10000 It's been a wild, wild ride. But there's a, there seems to be more and more institutional interest now. That big ride up to 20000 that was that was a bunch of retail buyers FOMOing, and that happened just very quickly. The, the monthly candle, I think, was only 14000 So, you know, there, yeah, there was a spike up high, right? But it was very short-lived. And, and people talk about how many people lost money because of that. It really wasn't that many people that bought during that time 
because again that spike that from like 14,000 up to like 20,000 that that happened very quickly only in a few weeks period of time did you buy during that really high I mean if you're unlucky enough to have bought at, at that time yeah then then yeah you and if you were stupid enough to sell then yeah you took a big loss right if you bought like it like <laughs> if you bought it like 18,000 and then sold at like 3200 then yeah that was probably not a good move uh, so uh, but I would doubt that a lot of people did that I, I would doubt that the numbers are high I think most people that have Bitcoin are probably up right now with it sitting at 10,000 I think most people are up that'd be my guess uh, let's see the last time you bought Bitcoin on a live stream it was very rewarding for you <laughs> our wags yeah, well, maybe we'll do it again and see what um, see what happens. But yeah, I think we're I think we could have another dip down before the halving. And usually, the big run up happens after the halving. Usually, about a year after is is when historically we've we've seen the big run up because it takes time for that to sink in. The effects of that halving, it takes time for that to sink in. Uh, Got to run. Thanks for the interesting show. Blue Shirt Boot is going to run off. Okay, let me know, folks. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? I mean, we're talking about the other show we were talking about. Love the watch you're with, right? I mean, of course, here I am talking about the 002, you know, coveting the the, the gold stunner. But but I have to say, I really do like this, this uh, titanium diver that I'm wearing right now. And by the way, I'm wearing one of my favorite shirts. This is a Kenneth Gordon shirt. This is 100% linen, and it it's it is so comfortable in any circumstances in hot weather, cold weather. I mean, it's just it's just so comfortable. Kenneth Gordon, made in these United States, 100% linen. So I've actually got the heat turned up a little higher than normal here. That's why I'm not wearing a jacket and a tie like I normally would would because. The lovely Brianna is coming over to visit, and she likes it a little bit warmer, so so I turned up the heat a little bit. Of course, she kind of turns up the heat when she's here anyway, if you know what I mean, but that's a whole other subject matter. But uh, you get her dancing, and it kind of, the whole place kind of heats up a little bit. But um, but yeah, so so what do you guys think? We got the, the 005 GMT Stunner as an all-around do everything, you know, dress, casual, travel, you know, whatever you want to do. And then we've got the the 231 sport watch, heavy use sport watch. Do we really have to add do we do we have to add a stunner, a gold stunner, an 002 stunner to the mix? Is that really where we need to go here? What do you guys think? And how do we, if that's, if that's what we should do, how do we put a little more pressure on Steve to have him get one in stock so I can put my eyeballs on it? I'm not going to buy one sight unseen. That ain't going to happen. I don't care what price he gives me, right? I've got to see, touch, and feel the watch. So let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about that. Do I need to add an 002? To the mix and Cliff Dweller says BTC was best performing asset class in 2019. There you go. Dre dress watch would complete the collection. Steve in the house. I think I agree with Steve. I think a stunner. I think a, a, a nice semi-formal dress watch like that. I think that would be really neat and the reason I say semi formal I think with a with a brown alligator strap and so on I, I think it's you know what I would call a semi formal for most most dress situations I don't know if I would wear that to a black tie dinner maybe you could maybe you could get away with that but uh, but yeah yeah so um, <laughs> very good deals on cruises right now Martin in the house <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, positively lutely there you go <laughs> it is really a shame how that whole virus thing is disrupting things 
It really is. It's a disruption. It, I mean, they had to cancel the Grand Seiko event. Our wags, I like a gold watch for business and dress. It can be a GS or a Rolex. I agree 100%. Uh, you know, I, I wore day dates for that function for for 40 years. And they they do the day date. The day date 36 does does get the job done for that. Absolutely. And we talked yesterday. Was it yesterday we had the show that we talked about your 1807 stunner? Let me see if I still have that tab up here on the browser. Let me see if it's still up here. Uh, oh, actually, we searched after that. We searched the uh, Yacht Master. We brought this up. Let me, let's go back to this. <clears throat> we brought up the Yacht Master Stunner. And let's see what else we had in here in the queue. So there were a bunch of Yacht Masters. And then let's see. Yeah, some more Yacht Masters. And there's the Day Date. There's the Bark Finish. The Bark Finish Beauty. Day Date. Yeah, I mean, those that, that style has really grown on me over the years. Back in the day, we just wanted the standard Day Date, you know, 1803 with the fluted bezel. But the Bark Finish is really kind of cool. It's, kinda, it's really kind of a cool, cool beast. So yeah, how about a gold Lang A? Um, so here's the thing: there are a lot of options out there for a nice gold dress watch. There are some beautiful Omegas that are reasonably priced. There are a lot of options, okay, and a lot of them don't sell that well because people don't want 18 karat gold watches these days. They all want steel. They all want that you know unobtainium steel like a Pepsi and, you know, the, the, uh, Daytona, you know, those are what they want, right? Ridiculous, but that's, the, people have no taste. Uh, that's what it comes down to. So there's a lot of gold watches that you can get a deal on. But the problem is I've gotten spoiled with the accuracy of the spring drive and the 9F. And so that's what's so intriguing about that 002 is I can have my cake and eat it too. I can have a beautiful dress watch and have that, beautiful sweep of the spring drive second hand and that amazing accuracy and I just think it's a stunning looking watch now again I might see it in person and all of a sudden I might think well nah it's not so great right but I I kind of think that I'm probably going to like it it's pretty stunning and from the video and everything that I've seen and the photos I've seen it it seems like it's a straight up stunner so there you go. Too bad that we in California can't alligator strap when you buy SBGY002. Oh, they, they, do they, is it outlawed there? Do they have to put like a calfskin strap on it or something? What do they do in California? Jerry, let us know. I like inside information. I like information from insiders. Let us know what they do there if you can't do the alligator thing. Yeah. Interesting. I guess they have to substitute it with something else. They might get to the point where you can't use any leather. Where you, you, you mean, there are people that say they don't want to wear any leather. That, you know, they don't want to wear cotton. <laughs> you know, um, used to be we always wanted natural fibers, natural everything. And nowadays... These PETA people and stuff, they don't want you to wear anything natural. Can't wear cotton, can't wear linen, can't wear leather, can't wear, of course, any furs. Forget about the mink hat, you know, or the mink coat. Uh, so, <clears throat> now, I don't believe I could write a check for 25000 for a new watch. I would rather buy a used 18 karat gold stunner and have a chunk of, of change when I could uh, use to buy another Bitcoin. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I hear you. Well, first of all, I will get a discount. I, w I will not pay full tilt list. Okay, so there's that. But, um, but I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Um, yeah. 
But the problem, here's the problem, is I, I sold my day date because I just wasn't wearing it. And I, 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 I just think that if I got another one, I'd probably fall back into that same situation where I just wouldn't want to mess with it. I wouldn't want to unscrew the crown, get it started, go through all that, you know, I, and I'm funny about I'd want to have the date and everything set right, right? So you have to go through all that drill each time you wear it. Whereas with the 002, I just have to wind it a little bit and set the time, and I'm done. There's no date to mess with. It's not, you know, it's, it's a lot quicker grab-and-go situation. And again, with that super accuracy of the spring drive, I just think it would be kind of fun. Now, do I need it? Hell no. We don't need any of this stuff, right? But, um, and, and again, I'd have to go and look at it and just really be blown away by it. I have to, like, really like it. Um, otherwise, you're right. I would rather just take the money and just buy some Bitcoin. But um, it looks like I might end up doing both. And I need more Bitcoin, I, like I need a hole in the head, too. I've got actually plenty of Bitcoin right now. I don't know why I'm buying more. But I don't really like fiat currency that much anymore. So there's that. I'm just not a big fan of fiat currency these days. And just I've got a lot of cash sitting. And uh, something, got to do something. Burning a hole in my pocket, as they say. Rolex Air King, 116900, hot or not. Oh, I love the Rolex Air King. Let's see if we can pull that up. Let's see if we can pull up a Rolex Air King. Air King. And let's put in that model number, 116900. And let's see if we can pull that up. da 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 And here's a video by our buddy, Tim. Let's pull this video up. Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today, we're discussing the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Air King, reference 116900. You can see this 2016 to present Air King and purchase it on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. See, I think it's kind of cool. Here's the thing. Here's the problem with the Air King is it has the, I believe it has the Faraday cage in there, the anti-magnetic cage, just like the, um, the Milgaus has, and so it makes it a little thicker. So if you don't mind that thickness, then I think it's a cool watch, and I think that you can get a good buy on it because a lot of people don't like it. And I like the green accents and the yellow, and I, I think it's cool. I think it's got a lot of cool factor going on. But for me, I would rather just have a, a date just or an oyster perpetual, a straight up oyster perpetual, because I like the thinner case for a watch like that. I'd like the thinner case. But if the thinner case doesn't bother you, then yeah, I would I would go for it in a heartbeat. I think it's a cool piece. Jerry A's in the house. California has banned exotic sin straps since. 1 1 2020. When I stopped by GS Boutique in Beverly Hills, they replaced all alligator leather straps. Fake leather? Fake alligator? Oh my gosh. Oh no. Oh, that's terrible. Now, is it like imprinted, like cowhide that's like imprinted with the. Cause, or is it like, like vinyl? <laughs> oh my gosh. Can you imagine? Oh, man. Oh, that's a total fail. <laughs> Can somebody confirm that? Is, this, is, he, is he trolling us or is that true? Man, that's really terrible. Oh, man. Add that to the list of reasons why I don't live in California. <laughs> Jeez. That is absolutely pathetic. Okay, folks, let me know what else What else do we need to deal with here before I wrap this stream up, because let me see what time Brianna's going to get here. You take a look here and see. Um, uh, let's see. Um, 
oh, I don't see what time. Um, Uh, 239 uh, 330 okay so she'll be here fairly soon um, okay uh, let's see here what else uh, you know you're frugal with your money like me I don't know if it fits your image to drop the big money on a new gold watch but if it makes you happy then that's another story our wags in the house yeah it's gonna have to blow me away <clears throat> And Steve's going to have to give me a really good deal, too. I mean, there's that. But he does. He does give me a really good deal. He takes good care of me when I buy a watch from him. So that's always a help. That that does help. And he takes care of a lot of the viewers, too. A lot of su subscribers get a, get a good deal, too. Uh, Max the Heating. <laughs> Martin Ryder in the house. Max out the heating. <laughs> Wow, let me see. I gotta clean these glasses real quick. Give me a second here. Got a smudge on my glasses. It's really irritating. Oh, that's a lot better. Okay, so so one thing, um, one thing wags about the being frugal this is this is interesting is <clears throat> I find that if if I'm extremely frugal in a lot of ways then that allows me to kind of splurge on some things here and there um, so yeah I there's a lot of things I don't spend money on that other people do spend mon money on and and the way I look at it is I can then take some of that money that I save by not spending it on, you know, like Starbucks coffee and all these things that people spend money on that I don't. Uh, then I can reroute some of that money to some of these extravagant items that I buy from time to time. So, yeah, that's what I look at, how I look at that. But I always try to keep it a small percentage of my income so that I'm not disrupting my saving and investing and all the things that I like to do. So it's got to be a small portion um, uh, to do that. Now, fortunately, I had a, a pretty good 2019 and a pretty good start to 2020, so I have a little bit of surplus money laying around over and above all my normal things that I like to do. So that's why I'm kind of looking at looking at doing some wild spending buying a couple of bitcoin that's pretty wild at ten thousand dollars are you kidding me it's pretty crazy pretty crazy stuff we'll see what it does the first part of the week we'll see if there's a nice dip nice dip down and i can snag some at a good price that'd be cool Let's see, Craig, how do you feel about time-only watches like the Rolex Explorer? It seems like you prefer watches with a date. Con no, I, I, I love no date. Um, that's why that, that, that 002, let's bring that back up on the screen here. That's why I love this, this 002, because it's just a three-hand watch. Yeah, absolutely. I don't read the date anymore on my watch anyway. I don't really use it to read the date, so... It wouldn't bother me if this titanium stunner didn't have a date on it, but, you know, they only sell it with a date, so I don't have any choice. And the same thing with this GMT. I mean, it only comes with the date, so, I mean, it's not like I have a choice. Uh, so, no, I can take or leave the date. I don't really need the date function. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's easy enough to check the date on your phone. Now, these people that say, well... You, you got the time on your phone, you don't need a watch. Well, that's ridiculous. Because if I'm at an event or something and I've got my camera in my hand, I'm doing stuff and all, I can't fumble with the phone to check the time. I can very easily twist my wrist and, and see what time it is and know, okay, I, got, I said I'd meet so-and-so at you know, such a location and I can confirm the time, right? I'm not going to fumble with my phone in those kind of situations to check the time. So people that say, well, you could just check the time on your phone, that's ridiculous. 
that's how people end up with broken screens because they drop their phone they're fumbling with it trying to get look at the time and then it slipped out of their hand it hit the concrete and now they've got a broken screen you know almost everybody i see including brianna by the way they've got a broken screen on their iphone guess what i've been carrying iphones since the second one i didn't buy the first one i bought the second one i've never had a broken screen never Never, because guess what? I don't fumble with it to check the time when my hands are full and stuff and drop it on the ground like, like they do because they don't have a watch. So there you go. Uh, let's see. They replaced with the alligator skin imprinted calf leather straps. Watch people in California are not happy about this ban. Oh, my gosh. That is insane. One more reason to buy elsewhere. Now, Jerry, what happens if you buy... Like from Steve, can he ship it to you, or can he not even ship it to somebody in the in California? If you buy it from Steve in, in Maryland, can he ship it to you, or can he not even do that? Oh, hold on, hold on, folks. Okay. All right. So the lovely Brianna has arrived. And so I've got to do some entertaining. And we're going to probably take some photos and maybe make a really cool video. And so that will, will be a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah, we're going to wrap this puppy up. And everybody make sure that you click the thumbs up. The thumbs up button and the little bell click the little bell so you get notifications and follow Brianna at briefit dance briefit dance.com you'll find all her social media links at briefit dance.com our wags in the house he says I'm frugal on some things but I do spend money on a vacation home uh, inboard boat a Harley motorcycle wave runners and six cars too many I know uh, what you mean about selective purchases are wags in the house. Absolutely. There you go. A lot, that is a lot of rolling stock, a lot of, lot of vehicles. Uh, so at some point, I'm going to have to stop by your, your beautiful place. When I get the Prevo and go out on the road, go out on tour on the road, maybe we can do a live broadcast from the beach house, uh, from the, I mean from the lake house from the lake house that would be cool all right have a good evening says our wags everybody thank you again and i will absolutely do that and i hope you guys do as well let me just pull this up on the pull the video app up here we'll do one last time check on the 005 stunner and then we will wrap this puppy up I'm trying to get the app to load here so that I can wrap it up. It says loading the device settings. There we go. Okay. And Martin, you're welcome for the live stream. Martin says thank you. And I'm going to say complete event.